All right, in the last video, we talked about the adjustment tools. And now we're just going to keep going down the line and we're going to talk about the object tools. These are allow you to create, well, objects. And so one of these we've already used, and it's the primitives tool. And I'm going to talk about that one in more detail first. So if I select primitives, this is for creating primitive shapes, and there's quite a wide variety to choose from. I'm not going to go into each and every one of these, but you can play around with them and see how they all work. But I will talk about the basics of creating primitives in 3D Code. So the first few that we have here are, you know, very basic shapes. You got spheres, cubes, cylinders, cones, etc. And each one of these contains several different options on how to create them, mostly in the form of their gizmos. So with a cube, you can move it rotate it and scale it to create any size box you want. With a cylinder though you have a few more options. You can again still move it and rotate it, but you also have these rings which allow you to change its radius and you can also change some of the tapering on it as well with these top and bottom rings. So some of the uh, different primitives have these additional options that you're going to want to be on the lookout for. Now there are some other specialized ones like the gear, for instance, and it has many of the same options as the cylinders, but you also have these uh, pop-ups that come up, which allow you to specify things like the number of teeth, in this case for the gear, and the depth. And the sharpness of those. Let me get a little closer so you can see what's going on there with that. See this is making them more like saw teeth and more like gear teeth. And also changing things like the radius and the relative sort of the width of the axle that would go through this gear. So the primitives have many options like that. There's also a special one here called the lathe, which allows you to create a cylindrical primitive based on a profile curve. So as you see, if I move this out, you'll see the primitive change to respect that. And just like the splines we saw in the last video with the pose tool, these ones work in much the same way. I can right click on this point and I'll change the interpolation. So I could add on a few more points, make that a harsh edge, make that a harsh edge. And then you see I've got this, this little trench that's been carved out of it. And I can make the top wide, I could make the bottom really taper in like that, and we've got quite an, we can get quite an interesting shape to start our model with. You also have options for things like text and coils, but there's another section here that I think deserves a special mention, and those are the freeform primitives. And the ways that, that these work is that I can start with something like, say, a freeform cube, and this is a cube, but you can deform a lattice around it to change its shape. So this can be quite powerful if you change it from a 2x2 two two to say a 3x3 three three, then we can grab the vertices, the edges, or even entire faces of that lattice in order to change the overall shape. So an example is if I take this and I turn on transform the lattice then it be behaves just like a standard cube primitive but if I make it very flat and fairly long, I turn that off. Now I can select one control point and then shift select the other two. And then I can start to turn this into something like, say, uh, give me a second here. If I grab, actually if I grab these two faces, then I can start to make something that might resemble like a wing. 
or another similar form. But that's the sort of power you get with these freeform primitives. Same thing, you can start with a sphere or a cylinder or even a freeform pipe. So if I change that to 2 by 3, then we can start to change this. Now, unfortunately, this only affects the uh, outer radius, not the inner radius. But the freeform primitives are very powerful tools. So that's one way to start um, a, an object is with just a primitive. That's typically how I'll start. So I can start with uh, this sphere. And you can create as many of these onto its own layer as you want. And I'll talk about these layers in another video. But there are more object tools. You have tools like Split. And what this does is it allows you to use these shape stroke modes like this polygon tool. And you can select a certain area and it will split it apart from the object. And it'll create a new layer here as you can see when I highlight them. And then I can use the transform tool and you'll see that it has cut it away and made a new object. You can also, however, if you don't want to actually cut it away but you want to clone a certain shape, you have a clone tool that will do exactly that. So you see it turns it into a model and then if you hit enter, then it'll give you a little pop-up. I usually hit no. This is just if you want to keep the object stored in here. And you'll see now we have just that portion of this base object copied and then put into its own space. Now some other, another important one here is the curves tool, but I'm going to save that for its own video because it's quite, it, uh, there's quite a lot of depth to it. But then you also have a few others which are in here, which the most notable is the box extrude. And this allows you to extrude a shape out from your mesh. So I'll draw a shape here. And that area will become highlighted. Now I can continue to draw and it will add to that selection without actually extruding. It won't extrude until I hit apply. But the reason why I'm bringing, why I'm mentioning this tool specifically is because it does something to your model. If I hit apply, you'll see we get a little extrusion here. It's very sharp, very nice for some hard surface paneling. But you'll notice my tool options on the side completely changed. That's because this Vox Extrude actually changes your model from a voxel model to a surface model. And I'll talk about the differences between those in another, in another video, but that's why this one's particularly noteworthy. It's a very useful tool, in order, especially if you're doing hard surface modeling, but that is a um, very important asterisk that needs to be attached to it, is that it does change your model from voxel to surface. And you can change it back, but if we were to do that, then I change it back, you might notice that we lose some of that nice detailing. It becomes a very rough edge instead. So those are most of the important objects. As I said, in the next video I'm going to talk specifically about the curves and also the spikes, which are very powerful, but they're also very in-depth, which is why I want to give them their own video.